Hello there, my fellow fans of Robotic Space Egyptians, and welcome to another lore video about the Necrons. Since in my last Necron video I started talking about their starships, and namely their fighter craft, today I decided to go to the other extreme of their AirTag's navy. I'm gonna achieve that by talking about the biggest, meanest and strongest ship they have namely the Cairn-class battleship. Today we're gonna learn what these things are, some infamous ships in this class, and what they're armed with. I am your host, for today the Tomb World narrator, and without further ado let us learn more about the Necron capital ships, shall we? The Cairn-class tomb ship is the largest type of Necron starship that the Imperium has encountered to date. Gigantic vessels stretching more than 15 kilometers across at the beam. Tomb ships are heavily armed with potent Necron ship-based weaponry, like the Sepulchre, Lightning Arcs, Star Pulse Generators, and Particle Whips, as well as many Gauss weapon defense turrets. But more on the weapons a bit later. Tomb ships are more than a match for any Imperial Navy battleship, and often leave nothing but destruction and carnage in their wake. As with all known Necron vessels, tomb ships possess an unknown form of drive technology, allowing the ship to undertake interstellar travel without the need to enter the warp. The tomb ship's drive technology eliminates the spacecraft inertia, allowing it to travel at very high speeds with extreme acceleration, while also giving the spacecraft an agility that few other ships can match. In truth, however, tomb ships, like all Necron spacecraft, primarily rely upon the use of so-called dolmen gates to serve as portals into the webway, allowing them to cross the vastness of space without resorting to the use of the warp, since the undying Necrons possess no Psychas. Fortunately for the Necrons' enemies, tomb ships are very rare, having been encountered only seven times by Imperial forces in the late 41st millennium. Each time the tomb ship was part of a large Necron force that included at least three Scythe-class harvest ships. More on those in a future video. All of the tomb ships thus far encountered by the Imperium have been of the same design. This is indicative of a starship that was developed to the pinnacle of its design many millions of years ago. There has as yet been no indication of the existence of other types of tomb ship other than the Cairn class, apart from a single rumor of a Necron starship that was larger than an Orc Space Hulk that is alleged to have engaged an orc fleet, though this remains unconfirmed orc hearsay. One of the most notable engagements with this class of starship was in 992 of M41. During the Orphean War, two Cairn-class tomb ships, designated Sun Killer and Dead Hand, were part of the Necron invasion fleet assaulting the planet of Amara Prime. When Battlefleet Orpheus engaged them and their fleet, the two warships proved to be almost unstoppable opponents, annihilating everything in their path. A couple of infamous examples of this craft include The previously mentioned Dead Hand The Dead Hand was the flagship of the Necron Maynark Dynasty's dynastic fleet. The Feyron Kutlak led the Undying Legions of the Necron Dynasty when they first awoke from the Great Sleep, and he was swift to prosecute the sector-wide Orphean War against the Imperial forces encroaching upon his domain. Under his command, the Imperial Orpheus Sector in the Segmentum Tempestus swiftly fell until the only bastion of Imperial defenders was left on the world of Amara Prime. While the Maynark legions undertook an extermination mission on the planet's surface, Kutlak led the dynasty fleet from the Dead Hand. Opposing them were the Imperial Navy's Battlefleet Orpheus and a contingent of battle barges and strike cruisers contributed by the Minotaur's Chapter of Space Marines. The Minotaur's chapter master, Asterion Moloch, and his elite first company boarded onto the Dead Hand in a last-ditch boarding assault after the fleet engagement. 
in defense, could luck tore through Moloch's Terminator bodyguards and was about to deal the finishing blow to the contemptor pattern dreadnought known as Ancient Geryon, when Moloch intervened and engaged him in personal combat. Though equally matched, the combat ended when the tomb ship was hit by a broadside of firepower, causing Moloch to fall out into the void and leaving the Necron fleet to disengage. The Sun Killer The Sun Killer was another tomb ship in the fleet of the Necron Mainarch dynasty. It participated in the Orphean War and was part of the Mainarch fleet assaulting the final redoubt of Amara Prime. Like its counterpart, the main arc flagship Dead Hand, the Sun Killer withdrew from Amara Prime following the successful assault upon the flagship by the first company of the Minotaur's chapter. The Inevitable Conqueror The Inevitable Conqueror was the flagship of the Faerun of the Sautek dynasty, Imatek the Stormlord. The vessel was crippled during an assault by the Black Templar Space Marines. Their leader, High Marshal Helbrecht, sought revenge against the powerful Necron Overlord who had bested him in combat once before, and had sworn an oath of vengeance to find and kill the Stormlord. Helbrecht would get the chance to fulfill this oath of vengeance in 985 M41, when his crusading fleet detected Necron activity around the world of Davatas. Moving swiftly to intercept, Helbrecht rejoiced when their quarry was identified as the inevitable conqueror, Imatek's personal flagship. Moving in with all haste, the Black Templar battle barge Sigismund managed to land crippling blows on the inevitable conqueror's propulsive array, stranding it in one place. Intending to get revenge on his opponent personally, Helbrecht ordered an immediate teleport and boarding torpedo assault upon the Necron tomb ship, and within minutes, the decks of the inevitable conqueror were swarming with very angry Black Templars. Alas, Helbrecht would not get the satisfaction of seeing his opponent. While Imatek's pride urged him to fight, logic won out and the Stormlord teleported himself and many of his most valuable assets away from the flagship and onto his unengaged escorts. The Necrons immediately accelerated away from the fighting and made good their escape. Fuming with impotent rage, Helbrecht could only gain a small measure of satisfaction from ensuring the total destruction of the inevitable conqueror by setting it on a collision course with the closest star. Personally though, I wouldn't call the destruction of a whole tomb ship a small deal. Tomb ships are composed entirely of necrodermis, a unique living metal comprising the undying mechanical bodies of every necron warrior, vehicle and starship. The material's regenerative properties and hardy nature means that tomb ships are immune to the detrimental effects posed by celestial phenomena like solar flares, radiation, gas clouds, and nebulae. It also means they are able to repair their armor at a very rapid pace during an engagement. However, standard Necron combat protocol dictates that a clean disengagement is preferable to a fight to the end, and tomb ships will often do this by fading out. When the vessel in question dematerializes into an unknown extra-dimensional space, thus taking it out of the battle. The standard armament of a Cairn-class tomb ship includes The Sepulchre The Sepulchre is only utilized by the largest Necron vessels in a given fleet. When the sepulcher is used to attack an enemy ship that has foolishly come within range, a wave of palpable psychic force is generated and sent outwards in all directions. The enemy crew are then paralyzed by visions of horror, and if discipline is lost, then the crazed crew are likely to do damage to their own vessel as they rampage uncontrollably through its confines. The Star Pulse Generator this weapon sends out a massive pulse of energy when activated. While other Necron ships are shielded from this attack, enemy vessels within the field of forces radius are usually severely damaged, if not destroyed outright. 
the lightning arc batteries. The lightning arcs use stored solar energy and, when activated, release it as a forest of living energy tendrils that envelop targets and probe for weaknesses. Lightning arcs act as the main weapon batteries for Necron ships, but are different from the equivalents used by other starfaring races of the galaxy. The main difference is in that the arcs they fire are able to split up and guide themselves to their own targets, providing a mass strike ability like no other known ship-based weapon. A lightning arc battery is usually able to cover all angles of approach apart from the rear. The Particle Whip Batteries These are another preferred weapon of Necron warships, and work by projecting a magnetic field across a short arc. This arc is sufficient to be cracked like a whip, and the antimatter particles within the stream detonate upon impact with normal matter. When a target is hit, the beam's power acts in a similar way to a strike from a lightning arc, albeit focused upon a smaller area akin to a lance weapon. A particle whip battery is usually able to cover all angles of approach apart from the rear. The Portal Portals are vast stone gateways located within a Necron warship that act as extra-dimensional conduits for boarding enemy vessels. More precise than conventional Imperial teleporters, they are more commonly used to flood enemy starships with a relentless host of Necron warriors or swarms of Canoptex scarabs. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Necron battleships for today. Would you like having such a powerful vessel in your fleet? What would you do with it? Let me know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help me keep this channel alive, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.